That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we would today today we're here to talk about <laughs> 7500, which I, I believe is how you say it. Uh, the directorial debut of Patrick Volrath, uh, which will be available uh, streaming on Amazon Prime, uh, courtesy of Amazon Studios, uh, premiered at the 2019 Locarno Film Festival out of competition and st stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt. 7500 is the distress call mm -hmm. for a plane being hijacked? Yes. Okay. So the basic story is a flight from Berlin to Paris? Correct. Is hijacked by these four Muslim guys. Mm -hmm. um, by Islamic to, terrorists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it's just kind of a procedural of how that how goes about, down. Yeah, how that inevitably plays out. It's, but very, it, it's very simple. Most, I would say 75% of it, or, or more, takes uh, occurs in the cockpit. Well, all of it actually takes place in the cockpit. Because if you think about it, everything else is surveillance footage. You're right, yeah. So 95% of it is, uh, we, we see through the eyes of the cockpit, mm -hmm. um, which I found very effective. Yeah. We both really like this film. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, anxiety-inducing for sure. So the film starts with um, sort of shots of the terminal, the Berlin airport, which, one of Berlin's airports. Yeah, it doesn't say which one, but... I have trauma from my first time going to Berlin and attempting to leave Berlin and being taken to the wrong airport and then being swindled into a by a cab driver to get to the other one. I feel guilty. So I, I was already... I should have ensured you knew you were going to tegel, but... Okay. I, I, I'm already tense in the opening scene of this film, seeing there at the Berlin airport. But we see people walking around. We see a gentleman with no baggage mm -hmm. walk into a restroom and then return to the waiting area or the gate with a bag. So mm -hmm. we already know some bullshit is afoot. Mm -hmm. They get on the plane. Um, there's like light chatter between Joseph Gordon-Levitt and he's the co-pilot, and mm -hmm. then the captain is... Uh, Michael. Michael. Mm -hmm. uh, of note, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's baby mama mm -hmm. is, is a flight, flight attendant on this flight. Uh, Eileen Tezel is her name, uh, and it's important to note that she's Turkish and she's Muslim. Turkish. Yes. So um, they have a little exchange before the flight takes off about how they're having issues with like getting... They're, they're trying to move closer to a school or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Um, but they seem happy, just like a lot of stuff to get done. They want to get this flight over with. The flight takes off, and pretty quickly, a gentleman, when one of the flight attendants enters the cockpit to ask the pilots what they want for dinner, a gentleman um, bum rushes her. It's when she's bringing the dinner. When it's she's it's about 17, 18 minutes in, yeah. They bum rush her. Uh, two of the men get in. They're able to subdue one and then kick another one out. Mm -hmm. But during that melee, the captain is badly injured mm -hmm. because also of note, the hijackers don't have real weapons because they weren't able to get guns or bombs onto the plane. So they fashioned like shanks, like made uh -huh. out of broken glass. Mm -hmm. And that's what they've used to hurt the captain. And then the next uh, like 45 minutes is them sort of n negotiating and trying to subdue the hijackers. It's very bare bones. But it, it felt is. very real, very authentic. It I mean, is. I don't know what it's like to be on a plane that was hijacked, but it definitely didn't feel like, you know, what's the, isn't there one with Harrison Ford or... Oh, Air Force One. It's not like that. It's not like a cheesy blockbuster. It's not like Air Force One or uh, ex uh, Executive Decision or Nonstop no. with Liam Neeson. Yeah, it's, it's, a not, it's not a Hollywood film. It has a very European feel but to it. But very effective. Yeah. Uh, very tense. Well, because I think anybody that flies or anybody that's flown since 9-11, like, this is a, this is a very, taps into a very real anxiety. It really does. Mm -hmm. So, in the end, uh, or... We don't really witness how the passengers are interacting with the hijackers because we're seeing everything through the cockpit and through the monitor that's looking down at the door to enter the cockpit. Mm -hmm. But we see that, so one of the gentlemen who was subdued in the cockpit, like he was knocked out, tied up with like a seat belt, he ends up, uh, he, he wakes up like an hour in mm -hmm. and he takes over the flight. He knocks out Joseph Gordon-Levin's character his character knocks him out and then takes control of the plane and his mission is to like down it mm -hmm. yeah. in the name of does he say Allah or, mm -hmm. yeah I don't want to get that wrong but he's doing it like as a 
like a, a symbol of the poor treatment Muslims have received from Westerners. Yes, is what he says. Mm -hmm. So, so there, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt has been, uh, who's playing Tobias Ellis. Tobias. Uh, the flight has been rerouted to an emergency landing in Hanover. So they're they're going to crash land it into wherever they can. Wherever they can before they can safely mm -hmm. land the plane. But one of the hijackers, uh, his character's name is Vidat, played by Omid Mimar. He seems to not be fully on board with what's happening. He's 18. Um, he doesn't want to die. Mm -hmm. So he ends up at, like attacking the hijacker who took control of the plane and then gives control back to Tobias. So Tobias is able to safely land the plane in Hanover, but he tells uh, Vidat that you know, yeah, once we land, we'll fly you wherever you want to go, which is obviously not true. <laughs> They're going to fucking tackle his ass and drag him to jail. But that the last 30 minutes is them, after they've landed, trying to negotiate, like, the dot, like, allowing the, the Tobias to leave. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, spoiler alert, Tobias, or um, Vidat is <laughs> shot. Mm -hmm. They get him to kind of go to, like, the open window of the cockpit, and they shoot his ass, and then... Tobias is able to leave the plane. Mm -hmm. The end. Uh, yeah, very good, very tense. Very tense, well acted. Yep. Um, uh, you kept getting frustrated with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character. Well, let me go through okay. my notes then. Um, yeah. Just some quick notes. So some things that work for me um, or didn't work for me. First off, we don't really know what the passengers are doing with these four hijackers because we're told there are 80 plus people on the plane. Mm -hmm. And there are only like four guys trying to take over and they don't have weapons. So we don't really see anything until the pilot, because they threatened to kill his baby mama, the flight attendant. So the hijackers threatened to kill Tobias's baby mama, who's the flight attendant. They don't know that she is. They don't know that she is. He, it, it almost seems that he might open the door for them, but he doesn't. Instead, he gets over uh, on the PA and says, hey, passengers, these hijackers don't have weapons you can overtake them mm -hmm. so we get the sense that they do pull some things yeah but we don't really know because we don't see anything and actually well you do see um right when vidat does gain uh, entry into the cockpit uh, because you do see some passengers like, yeah like there's a scuffle yeah um we um my biggest frustration is the hijackers don't seem to have much of a plan. Like, yeah, they they're very amateur hour. Um, very because they keep the, when they are able the, when they, after they uh, unsuccessfully attempt to enter the cockpit, they just start pounding on the door, saying, "Let us in." But the incessant pounding does help the anxiety. It does help the anxiety, yeah. but we know they're not going to be able to bust through that door. They're designed to not be able to do that. So I think a lot of that tension just felt kind of like it all rested on whether or not Tobias would open the door. Mm -hmm. And that was effective mm -hmm. because I was like in my seat, like cringing, like if this motherfucker opens this door. Well, and I like that it, it gave the audience... Um, an avenue of reprieve that they could fantasize about Joe Scorn Levitt going to, i.e. he could just turn off that monitor and just land that plane, which of course he doesn't. But uh, it's, it's nice knowing that there was a way that he could kind of escape from the trauma of witnessing that too. Yes, by turning off the monitor. He does try a move where he like flies the plane like crazily, mm -hmm. so they kind of fall around. Um, but going back to the hijackers, Vidat is so, it just, he seems so unsure. Like they already seem like they didn't have much of a plan. And then Vidat seems so unsure that I think it was kind of, it's a, it is a flimsy characterization, but also, you know, in the name of decency, I guess, how empathetic do you want terrorists to seem? And sure. I, I think they just tried to cut him as this, this, this uh, naive young man who got wrapped up in, I don't think it's problematic as much as it is. It just was a little grating because it takes him so long <clears throat> to make a decision. Like, did you not know they were going to kill everyone? Yeah. Like, it didn't seem real to him until his cohort got access to the plane. Mm -hmm. So, um, but again, I don't know what it's like to hijack a plane and then the reality sets in that I'm going to kill myself. So maybe that's what caused him to freak sure, out. Sure, yeah. So it's not bad acting. It just... No, no. Then my last note was the portrayal of the hijackers as terrorists seemed a little questionable. Um, 
But again, you just made a good point. Maybe we don't want to make them seem super, like, like we don't want to create these sympathetic characters, I guess, for someone who's going to hijack a plane. And well, somebody kill and somebody that's become that radicalized to want to just kill people in mass quantities. I don't have the ability to articulate what's wrong with the portrayal. I can just imagine there being people who are offended by it. Sure. And I don't know why, because there are people who have done this and people who want to do this. So it, it felt... It's it's definitely it, something it, we have to be on alert about. Yeah, so it didn't feel derogatory to me, but... But yeah, again, that's not my perspective. Yeah. So yeah, I can, I can see how somebody's going to say, once again, we have more Muslim terrorists. But then if you're making this kind of bare bones plot and you want people to be able to channel into it immediately, what kind of terrorist are you going to sure. have? Sure. Um, you're going to have the one that, that you read about the most. So yeah, I so guess. it makes sense. I was very pleased with the film. Do you have anything else? Uh, it reminded me uh, in style and tone of this 2018 film called The Guilty by Gustav Moller, uh, which is about, uh, I believe it's a 911 operative that is, stu it's, you're stuck with him in one room while he's listening to a woman on the phone that's kidnapped. So it, At this point, I would recommend The Call starring Halle Berry and Kidnap starring Halle Berry. Sure, yeah. Because <laughs> I love those two movies. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, The Guilty ahead. is being re remade in English starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, I, find, I found uh, Volrath's uh, debut to be very um, effective. Uh, he's actually Oscar nominated for his 2015 short, Everything Will Be Okay, uh, which kind of is this creepy title in light of this. Um, uh, also a shout out to its editor, Hans-Jörg Hans Weisbrick, uh, who's worked on a ton of notable films, uh, including this year's Exil, uh, which was uh, at Berlin and Sundance, uh, Three Days in Kiberon, um, Colonia, because uh, it took, you know, it, the effectiveness of this is all in the, the presentation and how it's mm. cut together. Agreed. Um, what would you give it? I Three and a half out of five. I yeah. would give it three and a half out of five as well. Yeah. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.